seven-year-old Ferris, a small newsboy, or newsie, who did not know enough to make change. Photographed in Mobile, Alabama, in October of 1914. The newspapers he holds are copies of the mobile item, with the headline Germans are driven out of Ostend, describing the end of the siege of Antwerp in World War I. A few of the Western Union messengers in Hartford, Connecticut. They are on duty, alternate nights, until 10 p.m. Textile mill workers in Newbury, South Carolina, in December of 1908. Willie, one of the young spinners in the Quidwick Company. Mill and Anthony, Rhode Island. He was taking his noon rest in a doffer box on this day, in April of 1909. Callie Campbell, 11 years old, picks 75 to 125 pounds of cotton a day, and totes 50 pounds of it when sack gets full. No, I don't like it very much. Photographed in Pottawatomie County, Oklahoma. On October 16, 1916. Shorpy Higginbotham, a greaser on the tipple at Bessie Mine of the Slaw Sheffield Steel and Iron Co. in Alabama. He said he was 14 years old, but it is doubtful. He carries two heavy pails of grease and is often in danger of being run over by the coal cars. Photographed in December of 1910. Minnie Carpenter, left, photographed in November of 1908 at Lorraine Mill in Gastonia, North Carolina. Minnie makes 50 cents for a 10-hour day as a spinner in the mill. The younger girl works irregularly. A pipe-smoking messenger boy working for McKay Telegraph Company. He said he was 15 years old. Photographed in Waco, Texas in September of 1913. Pinboys work in the arcade bowling alley in Trenton, New Jersey, on December 20, 1909. The boys worked until midnight and later. A young driver in the Brown Mine in Brown, West Virginia, in September of 1908. He had been driving pack animals for one year, working from 7 a.m. to 5.30 p.m. daily. The device attached to his cap is an oil wick cap lamp, which would be lit when the boy was working in the mine tunnels. Young Doffers in Mollahan Mills in Newbury, South Carolina, on December 3, 1908. A doffer is someone who removes, or doffs, bobbins or spindles that hold spun cotton or wool from a spinning frame, then replaces them with empty ones. Fire. Fire. I want to make the fire. An Italian boy on Salem Street on Saturday morning, offering to make fires for Jewish people on their Sabbath, in Boston, Massachusetts, in October of 1909. Two young workers, a reveller and a looper, in Loughton Hosiery Mills in Loughton, Tennessee, in December of 1910. Some of Newark, New Jersey's Newsies, in December of 1909. A typical Birmingham, Alabama, bicycle messenger, in October of 1914. An injured young mill worker. Giles Edmund Newsom, photographed on October 23, 1912. Giles was injured while working in Sanders Spinning Mill in Bessemer City, North Carolina, on August 21, 1912. A piece of machinery fell on his foot, mashing his toe. This caused him to fall onto a spinning machine and his hand went into unprotected gearing, crushing and tearing out two fingers. He told the investigating attorney that he was 11 years old when it happened. He and his younger brother worked in the mill several months before the accident. Their father, R. L. Newsom, tried to compromise with the company when he found the boy would receive the money and not the parents. Their mother tried to blame the boys for getting jobs on their own, but she let them work several months. Their aunt said now he's Jess got to where he could be of some help to his ma and then this happens and he can't never work no more like he oughter. Bib Mill No. 1 in Macon, Georgia, on January 19, 1909. Some young workers were so small they had to climb up on the spinning frame to mend the broken threads and put back the empty bobbins. 
15-year-old Vance, a trapper boy, sits by a large door in West Virginia coal mine in September of 1908. Vance is trapped for several years, receiving 75 cents a day for 10 hours work. All he does is to open and shut this door. Most of the time he sits here idle, waiting for the cars to come. Due to the intense darkness in the mine, the hieroglyphics on the door were not visible until his photoplate was developed. A spinner in the Globe Cotton Mill in Augusta, Georgia, in January of 1909. The overseer admitted she was regularly employed. Louis Birch, age 12, a newsboy, stands at the corner of 4th and Pinesty in Wilmington, Delaware, in May of 1910. Louis had just started selling, earning 10 cents in a day. His father had passed away. Louis, of his own accord, took up newspaper selling in order to help support his widowed mother. Lewis stays out until 12.30 every night and accompanies his brother, Stanley, who is a messenger, on all calls because Stanley is afraid to be out on the street alone at night. Ethel Shumate has been rolling cigarettes in a Danville, Virginia factory for six months. She said she was 13 years old, but it is doubtful. Photographed in June of 1911 noon hour in an indianapolis furniture factory on a day in august of 1908 the photographer found the arneo family children and all working on hickens farm in cannon delaware on may 28 1910 their children are three six and nine years old noon hour in the ewan breaker pennsylvania coal company in south pittston pennsylvania in january of 1911 a barefoot Indianapolis newsie in August of 1908. A 10-year-old spinner at the Rhodes Manufacturing Company takes a momentary glimpse of the outside world. She said she had been working there for more than a year. Photographed in Lincolnton, North Carolina, in November of 1908. Two of the boys on the night shift in the Moore Jones Glass Company, in Bridgeton, New Jersey, in November of 1909. A young newsie asleep on a set of stairs with his papers, in Jersey City, New Jersey, in November of 1912. 